So I'm excited to be here, especially when uh, Sinan had told me it was going to be in the Caymans. I was beyond excited. This is definitely the nicest venue um, that I've ever gotten to present in. Normally it's New York City or DC or somewhere. So, uh, And I, I really enjoyed meeting a lot of you last night. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the emerging data that enables precision targeting. I've spent my entire career in big data analytics. I started out in the government space and then moved over in the last five years to applying that to commercial analytics. And one of the things is people are always excited about new data sources and they just want to hoard it and, and bring it in and a lot of times it's, it's disruptive and not helpful. And so it's really important to start with your business outcome and then determine which data sources you need and make sure it's not just providing you interesting information but something that's actionable. So a little bit, I know a lot of you um, as a, were asking me where I worked, uh, were giving me strange looks. You probably have not heard of us. I'm with In Context. It's a business unit and a commercial arm of the Sierra Nevada Corporation. SNC is a large business. We're about $3 billion, privately owned. If you go to our website, you still would probably be wondering why I'm here. We are... The large part of our business and our legacy is in building space shuttles and satellites and adding sensors to aerial platforms and drones and robots. And so the company's history is really about collecting data. Back in 2008, they recruited uh, the president of our business unit, Sean McElroy, who is an expert in the intelligence community. And he brought over a lot of us that he had worked with for a long period of time because they wanted to have a group that could take all of that data could analyze it, could run the advanced algorithms, could do the artificial intelligence, and really help to enable decision making. And so that's what we do. Um, I've highlighted some of the specific areas here. So we apply um, it to digital management targeting. And really everything we do is using the same approach for, for data integration, advanced analytics, the automated learning and enabling of decision making. Cybersecurity is a big area. We do that in the government as well as with a lot of the large financial institutions. Risk, whether it's um, identifying which companies in your supply chain may have human trafficking or are most likely to have a cyber breach or into looking into um, internal threats, um, all different areas of, of risk we work in. Bespoke analytics, we do a lot of custom analytic jobs for our customers. Data, um, our specialty, and we have a lot of very passionate data jihadists, is finding data that's, that's not traditional and bringing it in and making sure that it's used in, in, um, in a manner that's helpful to your organization. And then artificial intelligence machine learning um, is something that we've done for a long time and we continue to hone our our expertise there. This is just a real quick look at some of the entities that we work with across the government space and commercial. So I had a lot of discussions last night and I was excited when I heard the Adobe presentation this morning, it seems to be the, the common theme, is that consumers expect digital personal or personalized digital experiences. If you see something and it's not on message to you, you immediately you're never going to look at the brand again. If you get an email or you see an ad and it's something that doesn't appeal to you, you write the brand off. You're inundated with it. We're in a very skeptical market space where people don't trust the market, you know, they don't trust the information that you're providing to them anyways. So you really have to make sure that you are looking at not just a cluster of people and giving ads to a cluster based on their demographic information, but that you are personalizing the messages and getting to much smaller silos, which means you have to automate that analytics for it to be cost effective. And you have to um, be very um, accurate with it. So I think there's a, some talk about this this morning as well. You know, when you look back 10, 15 years ago, you had controlled channels. So you had TVs, you had print, and you were designing messages and stories that would speak to large audiences. And then as we went to digital, we started to get into the initial parts of, of clustering and understanding your audiences, and you could do some targeting within that. But now we're at a point that we have to be very strategic and personalized, and it's not the cost of the advertising as much it is the cost of losing that person forever. 
And so there's different data sources and things that have been happening over the last couple of years that can help you to be more uh, precise in your targeting. The one that I'm going to talk a little bit in the next couple of slides about is mobility data. This is something we've been working with over the last year very intently. Um, and that is everybody carries their phone. Most of the apps, you brought up Uber earlier. Uber's one of them that was collecting geospatial information all the time. But a lot of those game apps and news apps and weather, they're all collecting your location data all the time. And when you aggregate that and you get it in from some of the data brokers, you can understand the pattern of normalcy for your customers. Signals of interest, so understanding, you know, what websites are they going to? Um, where are they visiting? If they've been to three, you know, car places or they've been to five car uh, websites, they're probably going to buy a car. It's a good time to target them. Um, Understanding propensity, so using your propensity algorithms, and again, you have to be accurate in this because if you're trying to precisely target and your propensity algorithms are off, then you're presenting them with the wrong offers. And so strategic propensity algorithms that are taking in your signals of interest can automatically take your uh, content and, and ads and, and show it to the right people at the right time. Uh, influencers, again, it's a skeptical world, and so the people that are influencing purchases is their peer networks, it's their families, it's the people that they spend time with. And so you have to understand them as well as the people that you're trying to reach. Cross-device attribution, I know this is something that everybody is trying to do, and there's a, there's a lot of different techniques that are happening for this, but you want to understand your customer and understand their signals across all of their devices and know it's specifically them, not just somebody inside of their household. And all of that's really leading you to get into a 360-degree customer insight. I was really frustrated four or five years ago when we started um, applying in a commercial space that the data that you could buy about your consumers was dated. And if I'm getting information that's three years old about their interests, it's not valuable. In fact, it's more harmful me to, for me to take those 600 data points and believe that I'm effectively targeting them than if I was just using um, the basic organic information that I had. Okay, so mobility data. Um, I talked a little bit about what it is, and I've just got a couple of the, the different kind of high level and a beginning of a micro level of using this data. So in this case here, we were looking for a Las Vegas uh, casino. They wanted to understand um, their customer base, but they also wanted to understand some of their competitors and look at better ways that they could target them. And so that's why you see the, the center in Las Vegas is the, the hottest point. But you can see all the areas where their customers have been. So what we did is we looked looked at the consumers that were in their casino over a two-week period, and then this data is showing uh, for two weeks before and two weeks after, where are these people coming from? And so you can understand by looking at the hottest spots where are the largest um, volumes of people that are coming into your casino are. And then in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a more micro level, which is telling you where else are they going surrounding your casino? Where are they spending their time? What are the restaurants that they are visiting? Are they going to any of your competitor space? Is it before or after yours? How does the time comparison, um, how does that work? How much time are they spending in each, which can help you to understand the volume of business, maybe when you should be targeting um, and running some different types of geospatial ads and offers. You can understand, um, are they going out with large groups? How many people? Who are they traveling with? So just lots of information from understanding their pattern of movement because it gives you true signals of interest of what restaurants they like, what shows do they like to see. So this wheel kind of shows you in the inside what are the specific things that you can um, learn from just the basic understanding of the mobility data. So where are your Customers, where do they live? Where do they frequent? What are their habits? Where do they like to vacation? Um, for all of those things, when and how long? You know, do they go to the gym every day for 30 minutes or is it for an hour and a half or once a month? How long do they come to your, um, your property for, your store? You can um, understand who are their influencers. Again, where do, they, are, do their influencers live in their neighborhood or is it a broader space? Um, what's their pattern of behavior? How can you reach the whole group? Um, and then that pattern of normalcy will help you to understand when you should target them, what geospatial areas, um, and what types of offers you should give them at different times. Uh, and then the effectiveness of your campaigns. Um, I think 
Even I was thinking as the, the TV person was talking this morning, when you put up a sign, it would be great for you based on the mobility data to just be able to know for every consumer who buys a sign, uh, the before and after, how much have you actually increased their business without having to get it from them from an actual cost dollar. And being able to understand for your competitors, the same thing, your com competition is not gonna share their revenue with you, but if you were to look at the mobility data and monitor their customer base, you could understand where they're doing certain campaigns, how much of lift they're getting out of that. So with that, I'm gonna end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.